Hey everyone, welcome to the series. If you have been curious about how Copilot Studio actually works, or you're planning to build your first AI assistant but feel a bit overwhelmed, don't worry. In this video, I will walk you through all the key components behind the scenes. We will keep it simple, visual, and practical, and by the end, you will understand how these pieces come together to create smart conversational Copilot agents. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start by reviewing the different Copilot Studio components. At the heart of Copilot Studio are foundational models, specifically Azure OpenAI models like GPT-40 or GPT-4.1 Mini. These models are responsible for understanding what users type and generating natural, intelligent responses. So whenever the assistant says something, this model is the one doing the thinking. So it's like the brain of your assistant. It knows how to talk, understand, and respond. Now, the model needs guidance, and that's the job of the orchestrator. Every time a user sends a message, the orchestrator kicks in and figures out the best path to handle it. So what it typically does, first it checks if the message matches any topics. These are structured conversation flows. If not, it moves on to the knowledge sources to try and find an answer in your content. If the user is asking the system to do something like send an email or update a record, it uses tools. And through it all, it follows the instructions to the determine the tone and behavior. So it's basically the central hub that make real-time decisions based on what the user needs. So now let's talk about instructions. So let me go to a different diagram. So instructions help guide how the agent behaves and communicates. And there are two types of instructions, the conversational-based instructions or the autonomous-based instructions. So when we talk about conversational instructions, those are the ones that are used in conversational agents, like the one that we're going to be building during this course. And this shape how your assistant responds. For example, should it be formal, concise, empathetic, or, or provide specific formats? And then you have the autonomous instructions. These are the ones used by autonomous agents, which are out of the scope of this course and these agents execute tasks uh, automatically in the background without a user needing to start the conversation. So for us, conversational instructions are what help the assistant sound the way you want it to. Okay, now let's move to the knowledge. So let's go to this diagram. Knowledge sources allow your agent to answer user questions by retrieving information from trusted content. So this could be things like uh, a SharePoint library with policies, a public website with product details, or, or even a dataverse table or Azure SQL database. So this is perfect when the user is asking questions like, what's the return policy? Or where can I find the onboarding checklist? So you can think of knowledge uh, as the agent's ability to search and find the right answer from your existing content. And you can see several examples of available knowledge sources in Copilot Studio today. And just to clarify, knowledge helps answer questions and tools are used to perform actions, which we will look at next. So now let's talk about tools. This is where your agent actually gets things done. So let me move to the following diagram. So imagine a user asks the assistant to register a new employee or pull data from SharePoint. So the agent won't just reply with an answer, but it, ac it actually can do something about it. And that's thanks to tools. Uh, and there are different types of tools you can use depending on the action you want to take. So one of the most common is connectors. And there are over 1,200 of connectors already available. So your agent can talk to systems like Outlook, Team, SharePoint, Dataverse, or, or even uh, external services. Or you can also build custom connectors if you need something more specific to your organization. Then we have agent flows. These are visual workflows that automate tasks step by step. So for example, you can build a flow that collects employee details and create a new record in an Ataverse table or send notification to their manager. So this is perfect for tasks like onboarding, leave requests, or approvals. Another powerful tool is the prompt feature. This lets you generate tailored responses using different models. So if you need the agent to summarize a long document, reward a message to make it more formal, or generate ideas based on input, prompts help you do that in a very natural way. And finally, there is something called MCP, or Model Context Protocol. It's a bit more advanced, but really useful. 
it allows your agent to work with structured data like form inputs or tables so it understands the context better and can reason over it more accurately. So yeah, tools are what turn your agent from just answering questions into a real problem solver. So it's what enables it not to just talk, but act. Now, what about topics? So let me go to a different view. So topics are structured conversations that guide the user through a process step by step. These are used when you want to keep things consistent and easy to follow. For example, request a laptop, submit a travel reimbursement, ask for IT help. And there are two kinds, system topics, which are built-in, like greetings or handling errors, and custom topics, which you design for your specific business needs. So when the orchestrator receives a message, this is the first place it looks, and if there is a matching topic, the conversation flows through that path. Now, what about triggers? So let's go to that view. So triggers are used exclusively in autonomous agents, which we are not covering in this course, but it's good to know what they are. So basically, triggers determine when an agent should take action. This could be when a new item is created in a SharePoint list, when a new row is added in a database table, or when an email arrives, or even a recurring time-based trigger. So they enable autonomous execution of flows without user input, which is ideal for background tasks or proactive agents. And finally, let's talk about the user experience. So let me go to that view. The user experience is really just how people interact with your agent. It's the front end. So most of the time, the experience will be through Teams or Copilot, basically the Copilot chat experience, which are the two most common and powerful channels for conversational agents in organizations. They provide a chat-based interface where users can ask questions, complete tasks, or just get support all inside the tools they are already using. But beyond that, you can also publish your agent to other places. For example, it can live inside a SharePoint site or even embedded into a custom web or application. So depending on where your users are, you can bring the system to them without needing to change their workflow. At the end of the day, all the logic and intelligence we have talked about, the model, orchestrator, knowledge, tools, everything flows into this user experience, making it feel simple and intuitive on the surface, even though there is a lot going on behind the scenes. All right, we have now seen what Copilot Studio is all about. It combines powerful AI with tools and structure to help you build agents that can understand, respond, take action, and guide conversation, all in a smooth, intuitive way. In the upcoming videos, we will dive deeper into each part, like how to set up instructions, connect knowledge sources, and use tools to automate tasks. I will walk you through real examples so you can see how it all works in practice. By the end of the course, you will have everything you need to build your own fully functional Copilot agent. If you're ready to start building, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.